Oh, happy Mother's Day, everybody, and welcome to Ancient You Are at Home Inspiration, the Mother's Day edition. I'm Jackie Gales Webb, and it's my honor to be here with you today on this glorious day in the name of the Lord. Congratulations to all of the mothers. I hope that you were honored today by your families and that the memories of the mothers who have gone on were cherished today. Congratulations to the Howard University class of 2020. Graduation was celebrated virtually. American University and the University of the District of Columbia also celebrated virtual celebrations. Congratulations to all of the graduates uh, watching us on HUR at Home Inspiration. And I wanna give a very quick shout out to uh, Roger LeMay and Bruce Warren of WXPN in Philadelphia, who asked me to contribute my knowledge of gospel music into a documentary called The Gospel Roots of Rock and Soul. And it was produced by Alex Lewis. It was distributed by NPR and aired on public radio stations across the country. And it was recently nominated for a Peabody Award, one of the highest awards you can get in broadcasting. So I wanna say congratulations to them. And sadly, a central figure in gospel roots of rock and soul, Little Richard passed away just last week from bone cancer. So my condolences go to his family and friends and fans. And I also learned today that Betty Wright uh, R&B legend, uh, making it easy for the cleanup woman was her big hit. She passed away just recently. My guest who's gonna come on at 615 is a legend. She played a huge role in the history of gospel and R&B and disco and Southern soul. At 615, we have the legendary Candy Staten. But right now, it is my honor to bring on to HUR inspiration, Bishop, Vashti McKenzie. Hey, Jackie Gales Webb, love you. Thank you for including me in this Mother's Day celebration. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, all of the women who have nurtured somebody else, whether they're adoptive mothers, surrogate mothers, birth mothers, spiritual mothers, mothers by proximity, uh, just mothers by next door. Girl, if you have just loved somebody into life, we are honoring you today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. McKenzie, how is Dr. Uh, Stan McKenzie and the children and the grandchildren? Well, Stan, the man is doing fine. Uh, supervisor of missions is supervising the bishop very, very well. He does very, very well. He does an excellent job of doing that. But uh, seriously, he supervises the mission work in the 10th Episcopal District where we serve in the great state of Texas, the 10th Episcopal District of the AME Church. Our young people are grown and they're doing well. Uh, our youngest daughter is uh, writing for Essence Magazine. Yay. She and her husband, uh, Anton, and little baby Blake, who is now 10 months old, and our oldest daughter, Jasmine, is pastoring. She is the she and her husband, Pastor Amos, pastors New Jerusalem Amy Church, Love City DFW, uh, in, here in the city of Dallas. And all our kids are doing great. Grandbabies are doing wonderful. Uh, I am revisiting wonderment through the eyes of through the innocent eyes of children. It's a joy. Mm, mm, mm. Well, Dr. McKenzie and I go way back. Way back. Way back, back. When I, back when I feel comfortable calling you just Vashti. Well, hey, <laughs> Vashti is still here. <laughs> Thank God. You are yeah. a tremendous role model, and this is such a unique time in the history of the world. What does it mean to be, what does motherhood mean in the era of the coronavirus pandemic? You know, there are mothers who are working from home, are blessed to be able to work from home, but they have small children. It's very hard. There are mothers who are facing unemployment. There are mothers who are worried about their adult children facing mm -hmm. unemployment. What word do you have for those mothers during on this Mother's Day? I, I will share with mothers the same thing uh, that my mother taught me when I was growing up. You build your bright future when it's dark. You don't wait till the roof caves in. You don't wait till the money runs out. You don't wait till everything caves in. Uh, mothers are very resourceful. We have figured out 
how to stretch a dollar. We've figured out how to stretch food. We have figured out how to figure out uh, to, to tap the things that's going to help our, our young people. So what I would say to mothers, don't lose hope. Do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. Mothers are very adaptable. We flex. We, you know, we, we stretch, we flex, we can do that. And when we do that, it's a demonstration to our, to our children. If they see us fall out, they're going to fall out. If they see us, you know, just get all wiped out by every problem and issue, they're going to follow suit. We are the role models, whether you have a partner uh, parenting with you or not, or whether you are going through it alone, we have an opportunity to prepare our children for the future that we know nothing about. In this COVID pandemic, uh, we're gonna, it's really going to stress uh, stretch our abilities to feed, to clothe, and to nurture, and to keep our families together. And we must do that. We must look to the help of helping communities, whether they are food kitchens, food banks, whether they are faith communities, go find the resources and take advantage of them. Now, this all goes back to what our mamas used to teach us. You know what our mamas used to teach us? Our mamas used to teach us, always have something on the side. Isn't that right? <laughs> That's Come right. on now. Hey, hold on. <laughs> Let the church say amen today. Right? Mama always say, always have something on the side. So you may, have your, mm -hmm. hey, you may have your big deal job with your big deal paycheck, but you always have something on the side. Mm -hmm. So whether you cooked on the side, you did hair on the side, you did nails on the side, uh, whatever, you, you did something on the side. So that if your big deal fell apart, you always had something on the side to keep you through. Uh, in today's, excuse me, in today's 21st century language, it's called <laughs> having multiple income streams. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Love it's it. still something on the side. Okay. That's right. That's right. And so um, take a look at the gift and the skills that you have that you can monetize. Take a look at what you can do that, that other people need that have a dollar value to it. Um, yes, we're going we're gonna to fall out. Yeah, we're going to grieve our losses. We're going to grieve our disappointments. But then take a look at how we're going to make this pandemic work for us. Do not waste this pandemic. Don't do it. Take this time to learn a skill, to develop a gift, to develop a dream, go after a vision so that when this is over and one day it will be when this is over, you're going to come out stronger, better. Your soul will be nurtured. Take this. Time. We, we have never had an opportunity to have this much time in our whole entire life. When was the last time you stayed at home? Uh, I can't even remember. This is amazing. I, yeah. yeah, we may never have this time again. So, well, what those, about also, what about the the young people who are looking toward the future and they see unemployment? Uh, yeah. What they sh what should they be doing to prepare themselves to get out there during this pandemic and after? This is a great time to be an entrepreneur. If you can't find anybody to hire you, then you create your own business. We've done it for years. We're gonna to have to do it again. And the new businesses in the new normal are gonna be in the era of technology. It's gonna be virtual, it's gonna be digital. It's gonna be content delivering because uh, technology eats content for dinner every single day. So look for those kinds of jobs that will uh, flourish in a technological process. So whether it's content providing, whether it's digital, this is a great time to start a business and to be entrepreneurial. Not by yourself, you can find others who have like minds who are willing to join you. And then, and then, this is a marvelous time to work on your relationship with God. Come yes, on. yes, know? and speaking of that, when this is over and we do return to the church uh, pews, it's not gonna be the same, I don't think. What should the churches be thinking about after this pandemic? The new normal, we have an opportunity to participate in the new normal and construct it together. What's going to happen is that you're going to find that people are going to have person-to-person uh, -person worship that supplements virtual worship. You're going to have to go back to your why. Why am I coming to be face-to-face, person-to-person in worship. Go back to your why. That means your spiritual disciplines of prayer and praise and worship. Go back to what we need and what we need and what the church gives that no other entity now gives in the 21st century is relationship, mm -hmm. is connection. 
We crave connection. When you ask people like, I can't go to church. I can't be connected. Connected to who? I cannot be reminded of my connection with God. I cannot be reminded with my connection with my neighbor or with my connection with myself. Aren't these the, the major commandments? Love God, love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so we have to refuel our connected, re reconnect our connectedness and not forsake ourselves of the assembly of believers. So what COVID-19 did was settle the discussion about technology. Mm. Should I have a virtual worship? Should I have virtual prayer meeting? Should I be there? Should I be there? And for years, you and I, along with a whole lot of other people, say you need to begin a conversation with the next generation where they are. And they're in the digital world. You have to begin the conversation where they are and then bring them to where they can be in Jesus Christ. It's going to be a virtual future in our new normal. Well, Vashti and I worked together many years ago in Washington, D.C. at a new radio station that was going to change the world, a 24-hour a gospel music station that was going to play message music, music to uplift the community. That's and uh, that's right. You were program director and you did a wonderful job. You, you come from a dynasty of communication family, a family that helped develop the Washington, the, um, the Afro-American newspaper yes. in the country. What was that like growing up in such a dynasty like that? And how did that shape you into the great woman that you are? Ooh, well, I, I grew up surrounded by a, a lot of uh, communicators. Our family is, is a family of communicators. Whether you communicate in radio and television in music and broadcasting, or you communicate from the pulpit, what I learned early is that everybody has a pulpit. You got to find out which one is yours. So whether <laughs> yours is a print pulpit, whether yours is a radio pulpit, a television pulpit, uh, whether you are, uh, it, it, you know, your classroom is your pulpit, whether your entrepreneurship is your pulpit, everybody has one, you gotta find yours. So I grew up among communicators. So I always knew I had something to say. I just didn't know where my pulpit was coming from. And so when you grow up with people uh, who allow your gifts to grow, irregardless of your gender, irregardless of your gender, they say, if you have a gift, then that's God's permission for you to use it. And so I was allowed, it was just absolutely blessed, surrounded by wonderful men and women, cousins who are still running the family business today. The Afro-American newspaper exists today. Uh, it exists in the, in the virtual world. Uh, so, you know, just go to Afro-American, afronews.com, you'll find it. Uh, I grew up in a place where if you have an idea, you can run with it. If you have a dream, you can do it. You have a vision, you can work it out. And so that means that uh, growing up with uh, men and women, and mostly my aunts, because you know, my grandfather didn't have any sons, he had he had daughters. So my, my mother and her sisters were editors, were publishers, were uh, marketing experts, were advertising experts. They ran newspapers, uh, you know, they ran circulation, they ran the whole thing. So I grew up saying like, oh, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. Correct, uh, correct. Yes, yeah, right, that's right. This is what you're supposed to do. And we had a very strong social justice framework that we exist in this world, not for ourselves, but to be sure that everybody else gets to their future as well. And, and so and speaking of that, I mean, you have worked with the Obama administration. You have been an activist. You have been a role model in areas of social justice. And here we are, Mother's Day. And, you know, we have the heartbreaking story about COVID-19, but we also okay. have the heartbreaking story about Ahmad Arbery and yes. jogger in, in, in shot in Georgia, just jogging. Yes. You know, yes. how can we um, take a look at this and somehow get inspiration from this horrible situation? Let me tell you, uh, here we go again. It depends upon your hue and your hair and your zip code to how people respond to you in a pandemic, whether it's a global health pandemic or something else. When crack cocaine ran through our neighborhoods, ran through our neighborhoods, the word of the day was these people are criminals and somehow are, have moral defects. And because of where they lived, their color of their hair and their hue, they were criminalized. Then all of a sudden the opioid pandemic hit 
And the cry was, these children do not need to be in jail. They need to have health care. Wait a minute. Our children needed health care. They lived in a different neighborhood in a different world. And so they're criminalized. But another group of kids in the country club in the suburbs, same issues. They deserve health care. And so here we go again. You had people standing with um, AKAs and semi-automatic rifles standing on the steps of a state capital. I think it was Michigan. People talked to them. There was no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. These people are armed and armed to the teeth and standing in the middle of protests. And nobody says a word to them. And here you have a young man out jogging. And all of a sudden, he's a threat. And he's shot down like a dog. Here we go again. Remember what I said, do not waste the pandemic. We have to be sure that Amon does not just exist as a hashtag and disparities in healthcare should not be a hashtag. It needs to be vocalized and we cannot sit back and be silent anymore because the more we're silent, the more it doesn't matter to anybody, to anybody else. Uh, I spoke with uh, Sabrina Fulton, the mother of Trayvon Martin. We're doing the Gratitude Project. We're trying to help people find a bright spot in their day. And it's called the, Brat uh, the Gratitude Project. And people can find it on my website, bashtimemckenzie.com. And um, what I, I asked her what she's grateful for. And you know what she said? She said, I'm grateful that God transformed my pain into power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a mother. That's a mother. That's what That's mothers mother. do. That's a mother. And I, you know, I'm gonna we're gonna uh, bring on uh, I'm gonna bring on Candy State, and I want you to stay with us if you can. Stay okay. With us. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask mm -hmm. you one quick question. Yes. Any suggestions to Joe Biden for vice president? <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> when, when, and be sure to include. Do not be exclusive. Be sure to include all portions of Americans, all Americans. Do not be exclusive and make sure that faith sits at the table of decision. Please just don't do a mandate and then come and ask us to co-sign on something that we have not had a voice to. Please respect women as, and black women and the gifts and the roles that we bring. Please be sure that all Americans have access to health care. If it wasn't for the Affordable Care Act right now, with so many people sick, so many people going to the hospital, I can't even imagine how horrible it would be. We need to take a look at our tax code. We need to take a look at housing. We need to take a look at policies that force people into a homeless situation where children go hungry every day and have to do their homework from the back seat of the car because they don't have a place to live. As I said, how long do you have? Okay. <laughs> Let's bring on Candy Staten. Let's bring Candy Staten. Oh my goodness. Hi. And how are you? Candy. How are you? I'm and, uh, happy. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, wherever you are. I hope you had a great day as well. as I've had a wonderful day here with my five children. Uh, my grandchildren weren't here, but uh, I have um, 19 grandchildren Ooh. and about 15 great-grandchildren. And so if I, I had everybody here today, it would have been like the church. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a built-in church already. but. Gail, it's so wonderful today to be talking to you and, and Bishop McKenzie. I, I could just sit here and just listen to you preach all day long because you say so many things that I wanted to just stand up and say, amen, amen. <laughs> because you just took words out of my heart that I've been thinking the same thing. Everything you said, I said, you know, I give you thumbs up for it because they are great words of encouragement. And right now, right now is a great time to get acquainted with your family members. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it, they don't have a choice. They have to stay at home. So now they can get off the telephone and you can understand who your children really are. Mm 
<laughs> what they're doing, you know, and how they're doing, what, what you know, who, whose friends are coming around and what they're into instead of going to work every day. This is a great time. You know what? You don't, God doesn't allow anything to happen unless there's a purpose. And he is not left to throne. Mm. Mm. He's still on that throne. And he's still looking down on us. And there's so many things that we as a family see. First it's the family. And then it's the community. And then the community. And then it's the whole world. Because we are the ones that start things happening right in our families. Things that we, that, that, that can, can affect the whole community. And we can, we've got, you know, I have a record label. I have a, I've, I've got um, two, two, um, two uh, companies. Uh, we have, uh, I'm a writer and a publisher. And we do all of that, all of that. And, you know, it just, I'm so glad when she mentioned, you know, put something on the side. We've always been entrepreneurs. Ever mm-hmm. since, ever since my children, not one of my children worked for anybody except themselves. And can you learn? You you learn from have, me. You have done extensive touring too. I mean, Candy's yeah. uh, resume started out with uh, gospel singers, and then you mm-hmm. went into Southern Soul, and then you went into <laughs> R and B, and then you went into <laughs> disco, and now you're back <laughs> at gospel. But you also tour. I understand that if it wasn't for the COVID-19 pandemic, you would have been on tour right now with uh, Paul McCartney and Diana Ross. Right? <laughs> yeah, and Anita Ward. <laughs> and Anita Ward. And Anita Ward, yeah, uh, over in London. And we had to cancel everything. And also in Chicago, we had to cancel that because of the you know, pandemic. And um, I, I don't know when, but you know what? I, it didn't bother me. Because I have a relationship with, I got, I'm so close now to the Lord. It's amazing how I, I, I go up in the morning and, do, and I have a prayer room in the top of my house. I go upstairs and I do my communion and I spend time with God. Mm. And I mean, God is just so strong right now in my life. It's amazing how, you know, you know, the song says, and he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I'm his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, no other has ever known. And, people, and, uh, have to, people have to get closer to the Lord. Yes. I think this is a time, this is a perfect timing for us to know who he really is. You know, we go to church and there's a lot of us there and we're sitting beside people we don't know. And sometimes we don't even speak to each other. We kind of like, excuse me, you know, um, excuse me. And, and they, okay, okay, we don't know their names. And when the pastor says, somebody reach around and shake somebody's hand and tell them you love them, you say, hi, how are you? I love you. But we're there, but we, we're there to see. It's almost like there's a stage, there's a performance, but do we really, really touch God? Yes, on a, on a one-to-one basis. We're getting all kinds of happy Mother's Day from uh, wishes from the people that are watching us. Thank you so, so very much. Dr. McKenzie, uh, Candy Staten is a breast cancer survivor, among yeah. all the other things. Yeah, breast cancer Hallelujah. survivor. I, I, um, I, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2018. And um, I went through that a year. And I had three operations. Um, I have I had a TIA, um, uh, a tiny little stroke, but it, but it didn't. Nothing really hangs on me because I pray it off. And um, <laughs> I, I, you got to learn. I'm, I'm telling you right now, prayer is powerful. Yes. I got up and I prayed that thing off. I had uh, the 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 tumor taken out of my breast. That was an operation. Mm. Um, also, uh, they had to put a something right here, you know, in order for me to do the chemo. I did 10 rounds of chemo, 30 rounds of radiation, wow. and I'm still here. Well, Miss Staten, would, 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 would you mind if I actually told everybody how old you are? Because you recently celebrated a big birthday. <laughs> yeah, I'm 80 years old. 80. Woo! 
80. Yeah, I just, I just celebrated my 80th birthday. And we had a great big thing planned. And about four days before, we had to cancel everything because of COVID-19. You know, and uh, it was it was okay. I didn't mind it at all because I didn't want to infect anybody. I didn't know who was coming. We had like 79 people coming. And I'm, I'm not going to do this. I said, just call, I call my pastor friends. And I said, what should I do? I think God is leading me to just call it off. And we had a small gathering here at my home. But uh, it, it was it was wonderful to be 80 and feeling as good as I am and know what I've been through. I don't care what you're going through today. God can bring you through it. He can bring you all the way through it. And I'm telling you, God did it. You mm -hmm. know, I went to CTCA, our Cancer Treatment Centers of America, but God did the healing. Ladies, I should we should we, should we continue to uh, talk about or be cautious about saying our age? I know when I turn eighty, the world's gonna know. <laughs> right now, I'm kind of you know I don't know if I want everybody to know exactly how old I am. What, what do you think, Dr. McCann? Uh, but I'll you know what? You know. <laughs> but I'll you know what? You know <laughs> <laughs> but it's encouragement to women to let them know that you don't have to dry up and die because right. you turn a certain age. That's age right. ain't nothing but a number, honey. That's right. You can yeah. feel it's all up here in your right head, here. how old you are. If you're young at heart, young in spirit, and you look at things from a different perspective, you don't say, well, I think I'll get him a rocking chair now and just sit on the porch and rock and watch Ooh. the car go by. That you, I mean, that's damnation to me. I mean, it's I, I like to move around. I'm doing something all the time. I'm playing the piano. I'm writing songs. I'm, I'm, I'm just doing stuff. I can't be still. I'm just, I, I just have that kind of energy and I love it. And God, I tell you, God has been good to me. Gail, he has been so good to me. Bishop, Ms. Hayden, I, I want you to um, talk to the young ladies right now because you you have had the experience. You you've had uh, a few marriages. You have your children. Oh God, let's them. not go there. <laughs> but there might be some young women who are watching right now who are who are going through what you went through as mm. far as spousal abuse. Do you have oh a my. word for them? Oh my goodness, you gotta look. You gotta look at the red flags. First of all, we meet somebody that we really don't know. And we get married before we really know them. And, and they, they put on this presentation type of thing at first, when they first meet you, it's all show and tell. And they give you gifts and they tell you how pretty you are. And they, they lead you on and on and on. And then you really don't know them. But when you say that magic word, I do. Then they know they got you and the real them comes out. So my advice to women is to get to know that person first. Don't just jump off into a marriage because he looks good and he's sweet. And, and you know, he takes me to dinner and he buys me watches and rings and he does all these things and Gucci bags and stuff. Don't be fooled because that stuff don't last. Mm -hmm. It's only there for a second and to draw you in, know that person from the inside out, not the outside in. And once you do that, you will not make the mistakes I made. I tell any woman, don't get married too fast. Don't you do it. Don't you go to that, have that big wedding, some of them a million dollar wedding, for what? And stay married one year mm -hmm. when they find out who that person really is. And I will advise young women everywhere, be careful. Mm -hmm. Know who you're getting married to. Because <laughs> that's a tricky thing. That's a forever thing. Candy, did you know, you know um, Little Richard? Oh, I knew him well. I remember Little Richard. Uh, we were, uh, I was with a group called the Jewel Gospel Trio out of Nashville, Tennessee. I got with that group when I was 12. Uh, and uh, the youngest was nine. And my sister Maggie was uh, 14. And Little Richard, you see, we had a fence around Jewel Academy. We went to school there and he would come by the fence and he, we would go to the fence and talk to him. 
And he was so funny, you know, he was really, really, he was amazing. He was a comedian. And he'd have us just laughing and laughing until, you know, the, the elders of the church would come out and tell us, get away from that fence, you know, and we'll see y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've known him since I was that age. And uh, he, he was such a wonderful, wonderful person. I loved Little Richard. Little Richard was wonderful. He was and also Be Betty Wright too. Uh, yeah. Betty and I, Betty and I traveled together. We would sit in the same car and we would be doing shows together. And uh, we got very, very close. And we would talk about everything. And uh, she'd come to my house, I'd go to her house. And that's how close Betty and I were. And it was just, it just grieved my heart so today when I heard she passed away. Yeah. It, 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 you know, it's just different when you know someone like that, that mm -hmm. close to somebody, you know, people die every day, but when you're that close to somebody and it's like Aretha, you know, she died and she was a good friend of mine and, 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 and Billy Paul, you know, he passed away and Percy Sledge, I went on tours with these people. I sit at dinner tables with them. We talked about our personal lives together. And to hear, you know, that they passed on and my God, it, it, it's like, we're just leaving here, Gail. Right, it here. was a, a really important music executive, Andre Harrell, who recently yeah. passed away too, that the world yeah. uh, was uh, sending condolences. Many, many top stars were putting that on social media. And mm -hmm. um, but Dr. McKenzie, music plays such a large role in okay, exactly. consoling us and Yes. And gospel music. I'm going to bring it on back to gospel music. Uh, what do you think about gospel music and maybe how it should be addressing the issues that are going on today, such as the coronavirus and, and the other issues that we were talking about, unemployment and uh, parenting? Is there a role, a better role that gospel music can play? Well, you oh, know, gospel music. Uh -huh. Oh, is that... Yeah, I'm gonna let Dr. McKenzie answer this one. I'm, we'll come, come back to you in a second, Candy. Okay. Well, you know, I, I'm waiting to hear uh, the songwriters or song, you know, the things that happen in our lives uh, touch our hearts, touch our lives in such dramatic ways. I'm waiting to hear what the songwriters are, are going to produce uh, in this next generation of gospel music that is coming out. When you go back and think about um, the Winans, you know, it's time, it's time for a change. We are the people who can do it. Uh, when you think about Hezekiah Walker, I'm coming out, I'm coming out. Uh, when you think of Marvin Sapp, uh, we're going to do better, we're going to do better. All of those songs came out of the personal experience in their own lives and their experience with Jesus Christ. And when they put those songs together and it comes out, it touches us. That's why the artists feel like a part of our family. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, little Richard was a, a part of our family. You know, yeah. he represented that kind of crazy side of us, you know, <laughs> the yeah. do want to do that, to do that. You know, he, he represented that part of us. Uh, and so uh, Billy Paul and, and all of them, they were a part of our lives because they yes. sang our lives. You know, mm -hmm. when the last poets uh, put out, you know, the revolution would not be televised. That's where yeah. we were at that moment. That's where we yeah. were. Uh, and so I cannot wait to hear what's going to come out of this coronavirus to see what touched their hearts, which also is going to touch ours. And I hope that the songs will be as deep as they are musical, mm -hmm. uh, because what we need, you know, the difference, you know, people, uh, the arguments go back and forth every day. Because, Jack, you remember when we first went on the air, there was a whole argument about message music and yes. gospel music. Yes, to, to music counter music. the gangster rap that was going on. Mm -hmm. We needed yeah. positive mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. All of that. And so maybe we just need to get back to some message music that's gospel music that sings the word of God in a way in which we can receive it. Uh, because I keep getting emails, I keep getting texts, I keep getting Facebook posts from people who said, you know, we, we, my heart is heavy. We need something to touch our hearts. It's not something just to make us dance and to make us glad, but mm -hmm. our hearts are heavy. Our hearts are breaking. And yeah. we need a word in song that'll touch our hearts to help us make it to the next moment. 
That's yes. right. And, and Miss, yeah. Miss Staten has some beautiful music uh, that I was listening to yesterday that really touches people's hearts, like glorify him. But yes. she also has some fun music, Dr. McKenzie. I heard a song where she was singing, I'd rather be an old man's sweetheart <laughs> than a young man who. <laughs> I wish I had taken that advice myself. <laughs> but you know what? Jackie, listen, I got a song coming out in about three weeks. It's called It's Time to Breathe. Uh-huh. It's Time yeah. to Breathe. And yeah. then another one that's coming out behind that that we're putting up on YouTube, it's called Where Do We Go From Here? Yeah. And it's a message song about yeah. where the world is, mm -hmm. how we're, we, we, we're, everybody is like messed up right now. It's different messages coming from different areas. We don't know who to believe. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? And it's an amazing lyrical song and it's time to breathe. It's time to breathe. And mm. when I wrote the song, I, I didn't know that we were going to have a COVID-19. Mm. I wrote it long before that. God gave me that song. Mm -hmm. and, and it is amazing. It's amazing how it fits at what's going on. You know, when people, I've, I've watched them on TV and, and they show pictures of people in the hospital with these these things on and the oxygen going down and they're trying to breathe. Yes. But in another sense, it's time for us as just everyday people just to breathe. Mm -hmm. We're so caught up in the news. We're so caught up with listening to the scientists. We're so caught up talking about there's going to be another one next year and all of this negative prophecy and I bind every one of them. <laughs> and I said, no, it's not. That thing is going to die and it's never going to come back in the name of Jesus. It is a dead COVID-19. I refuse to let that mess live Amen. and tear our Amen. people up. We can, we, can, we can shout our way on through the rest of the yes, evening. we can. We can yes, shout we our can. way on <laughs> Because you get me to preaching about that. I mean, I get I get <laughs> radical. I get we 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 have one out of time here. We've actually gone over. It's been worth every second. I want to thank Candy State. God bless you. I want to thank Bishop Bashtai McKenzie. And I want to ask Bishop McKenzie if she could give us a, a, a prayer to take us on out. And we'll say goodbye to our friends. Yes. Praise God. Well, let me ask you to take a virtual, uh, you know, the hand virtually of someone. And Jackie, thank you for bringing us together. Candy, you know, I love you. We play your music. Uh, Jackie and I grew up with you. Yes. <laughs> you didn't know it, but we grew up playing you. And it's good to see you. And I'm happy that you're still writing. Please, we need it. We need your yeah. gift. Uh, thank exactly. you for sharing your gift with us. I've been calling you Gail, but that's your second name, right? Right. But that's yeah. okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Jackie, Jackie, I love Gail. I love I love that name. I don't know why I just love Gail. That's if right. I had another little girl, I would have named her Gail. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful name, Jackie, but it was so great being with you. I Thank love you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Keep us in prayer. Keep us in prayer. We we'll keep you in prayer as well. We will. And, and thank you. Uh, thank you, Candy. Thank you, Jackie. Love you. Love you. Uh, if you with someone, join hands. If not, uh, virtually uh, join hands. Come on, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Turn to God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life and health and strength. And we thank you that your word is still true, that you will fight our battles for us. And if we confess, you'll be faithful to forgive us of our sins. We thank you for your word that you desire us to prosper and be in good health. We thank you, hallelujah, that nothing is impossible with you. We thank you, hallelujah, that we can stand on a word and that your word has the power to reproduce itself in the life of the believer. Thank you that we can call upon your name because we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, I thank you for Jackie Gales and Candy Staten. And we thank you for the pulpits that, and platforms that that you have given to them to minister to us. We thank you for mothers, hallelujah, for mothers, Lord. We pray that your love will be shared abroad in their hearts, that you will give every mother the resources that she needs to raise children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to be positive and productive adults to serve this present age. God, we thank you for the sacrifices they make for their children. We thank you for the loving, hallelujah, that they even love hard to love children. We 
thank you, even if they have to love and raise children by themselves. Now resource the women that rock the cradles. Uh, that is the future of the world. Resource the women, undergird them with power and strength and confidence and courage. Come on, God. Oh, glory to God. We thank you and we thank you and we thank you and we thank you. We thank you for the mothers that we can hug today. We thank you for the mothers that we can text and give a call and give a card today. And we thank you for the mothers that we hug in our memories that yes, are not yes. physically with us, but they're still in our hearts and a part of our loves. God, we thank you for the women that have nurtured us every which way. And we thank you for the spiritual mothers that continue to pray for us every day. As you cover them, cover us. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Let the whole church say amen. 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 Thank you once again to Dr. McKenzie, Bishop Dr. Gashtai McKenzie, Bless and you. Candy Staten. Woo! I'm Jackie Gales Webb. Please join us next Sunday here. H-U-R at Home Inspiration. Next Sunday, we'll have Bishop Jamal Bryant and gospel artist with his wow. big hit called Big. Pastor Mike Jr. on If You Are at Home Inspiration. God bless you. Be safe. God bless you. <laughs>